I have decided not to be putting out videos like these anymore just because of a comment I had some time ago. The person complained about the fact that I wasn't really showing exactly what I was doing. I had already done the edit and I was just skimming through the things I had done. I mean, I felt bad. I realized what he said had some truth to it. The only reason I don't want to record when I'm editing is because most of the time I'm just trying out new things. Because after this particular shoot, when I entered it, I, I took it to Lightroom, I brought it into Capture One. I was trying to figure out which of my, my digital products probably would work for this particular image. I had to come settle here in Capture One. What I did in Lightroom also worked. I wanted to maintain the color scheme I have on my Instagram. So I just made sure I used Capture One for this. And this is the before. This is literally what I got from the camera when I did the shoot. I'll provide it behind this. I think I have I have the behind the scenes on my YouTube. I'll provide it up here. Just make it a point to go watch it. This is an inspiration from an earlier shoot I did last year. I think no last two years around November with the model Lemony or Rosalind. I love the greens and the orange also was an inspiration from a shoot I did with Model Maya. I wanted to introduce that particular orange into the scene. And you know, I have props and everything, so I sort of incorporated it into the shoot. Go watch that particular video. So in the end, I decided to use I combined Marqua and TJD color styles. These are two digital products I'm proudly going to push out to you guys. They work very well on Capture One images, both indoors and outdoors, studio, weddings. Either one of them should work perfectly. The TJD One or TJD Zero One X Pro One has the feel, it, it warms up your image, and that's what I did here, right? So, this is the before, like I said, this is the after. The only thing I did or I adjusted in this is to increase the exposure and that's what it did for me i had to increase the exposure to expose the image just to make sure i have everything in check then i added the x pro 3 just to introduce some cyans it's basic the x pro 3 this is this is what it looks like it's basically a cold look to whatever it is you're looking for you can have this and adjust to taste or create a new layer with it and reduce the opacity. I usually like to combine these just because it's a feature in Capture One I love to use. So I added the Expo 3 to introduce some cyan, reduce the reds and all that. And as you can see, I have labeled canvas front, canvas behind. These two canvases were inspired by the shoot I said earlier with the lemony. And I wanted to change the colors in the direction I wanted. Also, I would have darkened this part just to just to bring out the 3D wall effect I wanted everybody to see when I made this particular setup. So canvas front, as you can see, I open, I changed the color from this to that. If I toggle this off, you can see the color. If I toggle it on, then you see the color I'm looking at. Same for canvas behind, you probably can tell before and after. I wanted to make sure they were both line in the same direction with respect to hue. That's probably warming up the, the green. Same for this. Without canvas behind warm, this is probably going to look cool just because of the effect of the TJD Expo 3, right? So you fix it as you go along. Then I added TJD Cream 1. This is from my Marqua preset, TJD Marqua, or the Marqua Cool Style, sorry. I added that, reduce the opacity. Don't forget, I also reduced the opacity for the X Pro 3. This adds a sense of warmth. It adds creaminess to my image. I tend to have some blues in the shadows and some warmth in the highlights. And there are other adjustments in there. Just make sure to check out down in the description box below my digital store link if you're interested in purchasing these particular presets or cool styles. Let me be exact. Now, I realize this was overblown after i was done introducing all my presets all my cool styles so you can see vase and tablecloth if i toggle the mask on and i 
turn it on you can see i selected just a vase or the vase 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 pick one and the tablecloth over here this is as a result of the latest features with respect to the ai selection tools in capture one i love the updates in capture one and i'm, I'm you know it's good it's making my work easy let's toggle the mask off and as you can see it reduces the highlights in the let me open the exposure you can see the exposure i open the brightness and let's open the highlights okay i think i only made adjustment here in the exposure slider so that's what's there together with i think i made an adjustment in the yellows over here or i did not okay in the oranges just to reduce some color in there then the curtain i decided to make some adjustment to it reduce the amount of greens in the curtains then i added vignette all right using the radial filter or the radial gradients over here as you can see i used curves to create that particular gradient in the rgb just so i can have both contrast and color when you use luma you only affects the luminosity and not the color but when you use rgb it affects luminosity and color so rgb contrast introduces color luma contrast doesn't introduce color basically this is what i did here in capture one so we can let me use a split viewfinder just so you can see this is where i started from and this is where we are at i want you to pay attention to the highlighted parts of the image and any other any other distraction you see here we'll probably be fixing that in photoshop so let's jump into the magical world of photoshop and show you what i did exactly pay attention to the skin tones also and yeah i didn't touch the skin tones here in capture one well maybe my cool styles did but i could have done more by unifying the skin tones and all that so i think i did that in photoshop so yeah jumping into photoshop there are quite a few things i did here let's toggle everything off i have merged some like i said i was editing on the spree and i didn't think about creating a video but by popular request i had to do this behind the edits well we can call it that behind the edits so you can see what i did so this is right from capture one after the coloring and everything and all the adjustments we made the whole crack in the canvas i think i have to send this canvas back for repainting these cracks were nuisance and i had to remove each and every one of them using the remove tool with my generative ai turned off so i can make it quick and fast i love it it's it's the latest tool in 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 capture in, in photoshop that i really really love i had to make adjustments also i think i added a generative fill image to this particular frame to bring it all together i don't want it to be bare i removed the lights i placed at the top i realized later that it was a distraction i did some liquefy also to straighten this particular canvas to sell out the third wall effect and i straightened the frame also to fit i removed any distractions in here and there you have it so this is after that this is before and after as you can see before then after distractions removed using the remove tool over here and generative fill to add so if i toggle this off this is a layer i created just because i wanted to copy the same generative fill layer i created onto the other images i was going to edit in this particular scene so if i toggle this on you can see this is the image I generated. I left it here for this particular video. Okay, so heal removes all blemishes and any other blemish. Then you can see I've relabeled them to I've relabeled this particular layer to reblam retouch. Reblam is the easiest for me when I want a natural edit on my image. You can also tell I have a max on. I just wanted the retouch to be on the subject only or the model only so if i toggle this on and i zoom in before reblum after reblum before reblum after reblum reduced a ton of the workload i had to do with respect to dodging and burning then 
makes it easier, right? Link in the description box below. I would advise if you're one into natural research and reblum is something you should be looking at. Now into most of the things I like to do in Photoshop also. I like to bring to life the, the things I feel will make the image stand out the most. And as much as I've done a lot of color grading in Capture One, I do same in Photoshop. So I'm going to toggle the color grade folder on. And there you go. If I toggle all of this off, right? This is the first skin tone to make sure the face and the legs match. As you can see over here. I don't know if you can tell. Take a look at this area. All right. So we've started with the matching. I have some reds, but the lower legs are still yellow, which we'll fix that very soon. Then I introduce my Photoshop LUTs. This is for the dark skin tone, as you can see, Choco Tone and one to remove any reds and to push out how dark the person is. Then I added another particular lat, which I usually use for my light skin models, the caramel four, but it serves, it adds a certain look, that magenta, bluish, reddish tones into my shadows and blacks. And it warms up my highlights in a way I really love. So this is before that and after that. Take a look at how it affects the greens of the canvas backdrop. I I love how it made it look. I've reduced the opacity for that. Same for the skin tone also. Then I added selective coloring by adding some blues into my blacks, which usually works in some magenta and some cyan, right? And it works for whatever reason. It always works for me. After that. I like I said, I asked you guys to pay attention to this particular highlighted place over here. It was too, it was standing out too much for me. The yellows were too much in the, in the so called sky of the image I generated. So, this is using hue and saturation layer adjustment to reduce that. As you can see, pay attention to it. This is before, and that is the after. Then I made adjustments to the skin color using hue saturation layer adjustment hcl or hue tech layer adjustment i have a video of that i've even given out a free action on that to be able to help you regarding correcting skin colors on the subject you're shooting or on the model you're shooting so if i go into my red you can see i have selected a range of color i have fixed it with the hue and there you go so i'm going to zoom in right Take a look at the legs when I toggle this on. When I toggle this on, this is how it looks like. I toggle it off, this is how it looks like. Same goes for the face too. So, you know what? Let's turn on the max and see where it's affecting. Oh, the neck. So, the neck and the legs. So, let's go over towards the neck and see before and after before and after it fixes that issue for me perfectly okay now that we have even skin tone i'm going to add a little bit of contrast with respect to using levels and after doing that i eliminated the white parts from where i feel will have more white like the vase the the frame over here the curtain and this particular vase over here too so basically this is what I did in the color grading tab, right? We moved it from this to that. Then dodging and burning. You guys know what dodging and burning is. I dodge my shadows and I burn my highlights all in the name of trying to unify that. So reblum research reduce the workload. And this is what you get after, you know, some minutes and hours of dodging and burning before, or oh, what well, this is the after. And as I said before, I want you to pay attention to the skin. Then I go overall the image before and after, before and after. Just minute adjustment to the hair, to the skin to make it look more smooth. The outfit to pop it out, right? Then on the overall image with respect to the canvas backdrop I used, 
you know they were purchasing there and i used dodging and burning to unify that also so if i toggle this you can see the masking on the background also just to make sure everything works so you can see this is the part of the human being and the remainder is the background and that's what brought to life the evenness on the backdrop and how smooth and silky the image looks like and i added some vignettes and with my vignettes and there are two ways to go about vignettes and but i think i love this particular one using curves the rgb version this is after and this is before and after so you create a curve adjustment you re you reduce the exposure you invert the adjustments just so that it doesn't affect the model then you create another one you increase the exposure then you invert the adjustment just so that it affects only the model and nothing else so you darken the background or you darken the surrounding then you brighten the center to which the model is and that's what gives you this particular vignetting i really love so you can see light and relight you know whatever it is you want to name it so that's that for the vignette then i added a tad bit of noise just to make sure we have a little bit of texture i like to do that to introduce texture and all that i do that just because i don't add sharpening to my image sharpening is also a form of contrast which i already have contrast in this particular image so i'm going to limit that by using noise or greens and that's that so basically that's what i did i saved it came back to capture one and exported it so Control shift d then i exported it named it to chelsea because the model's name is chelsea exported these are usually my settings for exports when i want to post them on instagram usually i like to keep it this way also just because i put them up on my website and also on twitter most of the time and yeah so basically this is what i did for this particular image i transferred that to this and that and that and that so basically like i said same edits i ran through all of them to give me a uniform or a unified look thank you so much for watching today's video make sure to subscribe like and share check out down in the description box below a link to most of the things i used in today's video my digital products really blam for faster and quick editing and a link to the behind the scenes of this particular shoot thank you and i'll see you in the next video and oh if you like more videos like these let me know down in the comment section below just so i can put out more of these behind the edits if you don't maybe we are all in the same super the guy who said i wasn't really doing anything thank you and i'll see you peace